local government, moving ideas from ambition to reality. Local government is changing. With over 1,000 projects in train around the country, we are changing the face of your communities. But we are also changing ourselves. The Ministry of Local Government launched its policy on local government transformation and modernization in December of 2012. Minister Dr. Suraj Ratan Ramachan says the policy was born out of government's realization that more could be done to make local government more people-centered and give more power and autonomy to communities and their regional corporations. The policy on local government transformation and modernization proposes several changes to the current local government system that aim to do this. It is hoped that the suggestions laid down in its pages will drive improvements. Minister Rambachan detailed the expected outcomes of the new policy document. Let me say that the objective of the modernization and transformation exercise is to achieve at least three things. One, the delivery of better quality services to citizens in this country. Secondly, to facilitate the building of better communities. And thirdly, to facilitate the building of stronger councils so that they can carry out the first two. There was a report done in June 2010 on the re readiness of local government for the del delivery of exceptional services. And that report lamented this, that the structure and organization was not in fact fit for the purpose of delivering the kind of mandate that local government um, should provide. As the provision of high quality services is critical to the proper functioning of local government, the transformation and modernization policy aims to tackle chronic deficiencies in that system's human resources, finances and infrastructure. At the first public consultation on the policy in San Fernando, Prime Minister Kamala Prasad Bisesa listed some of these deficiencies and she also invited attendees to give some thought as to whether the policy document addresses them adequately. Consider also, as Mr. Ramachan has already pointed out, the best structure for regional cooperation. We have a structure now. Is it the best? Do we need to improve on it? Do we need to change it? How do we change it? What should be the framework? What should be the architecture for a regional cooperation? Your views, your recommendations, your suggestions on the issue of increasing the financial and human resources available to local government practitioners and authorities. So that is something you may want to consider. The human resource capacity of every regional corporation is already currently being enhanced to provide better public service. The sourcing of 147 litter wardens has already begun. Meanwhile, municipal police are to be given more teeth Municipal police already play an important ceremonial role at the corporations. The transformation and modernization policy suggests ways that their role can be developed further. The scope of the responsibilities, the document suggests, uh, should be broadened to include domestic violence, juvenile delinquency, drug detection and summary offenses. 
Public health officials are not to be left out. A memorandum of understanding between COSTAT and the local government ministry will create 50 scholarships for public health officers. Communication between the ministry and regional corporations has also been strengthened as ICT capabilities are introduced. Currently, several corporations are networked for teleconferencing with the goal of having all equipped with teleconferencing capability within the coming financial year. The introduction of project management software will also allow stakeholders to see the completion rate of each and every project around the country. The idea behind these and other improvements suggested in the transformation and policy document is to involve the population in having decision-making power and oversight. This will ensure better quality and efficiency. In terms of infrastructure, the policy addresses the need for town halls to be constructed in each regional corporation. New administrative complexes are earmarked for Arima and Pinal. Outfitting for Shigonis should be completed by January of next year. But what would the buildings be without the people who staff them? Councils are the lifeblood of local government. Without the people who make up the staff of the ministry and the regional corporations, little could be accomplished. It has been acknowledged that at times, service delivery is slow. We want to change that. We want to make sure that people get a satisfactory level of service and that people's problems are addressed. The minister, who has also served as a St. Patrick County Council and Mayor of Shugonis, says the part-time nature of local government service contributes to this. He believes councillors should hold their positions full-time. Local government councillors, for the first time, now have their own offices with secretarial staff. The councillors, who have much travelling to do around their electoral areas, were also given tax concessions on vehicles. As part of local government reform, the transformation and modernization policy also advocates full-time employment with related salaries for councillors. In fact, local government is real people government and it cannot be done on a part-time basis. If, if they are inadequately paid, very inadequately paid. The issue of money and finances extends well beyond the individual councillors themselves, as there has always been contention between central and local government over the disbursement of funds. The Transformation and Modernization Policy document touches on the issue, citing the need for reform of financial process for more equitable distribution of resources to districts. Such a formula, if arrived at, would curtail, if not eliminate, the recurring claim of partisan bias or discrimination in funding ostensibly by the local government bodies which are controlled by a political party or parties that differ from those at the center. In fact, the focal point of the transformation policy is less and not more control from the center. The document advocates the devolution model of local government and outlines steps that will be taken to provide local government with more protection under the Constitution. This arrangement gives more power to communities to make decisions on what is important to them. An essential part of taking government back to the people is giving them a voice in it. Minister Rambachan believes local government is community democracy at work. Now is the time for us to do more. Now is the time for us to go out there and to listen to the people, to the stakeholders, to the community leaders, who will have great ideas also as to what can be done in order to transform and modernize local government. Transformation of a community-driven form of government can only happen with consultation with the communities. Therefore, local government is coming to you, the public, to hear what you have to say. Over the course of the next few months, several stakeholder meetings are planned for venues across the country to give villages a chance to air their views on how local government matters should be handled in the future. Consultations have already come to several communities across the country. The consultation process is expected to result in a white paper which will be taken to Cabinet. Transformation and modernization of local government will be a complex task requiring collaboration and work to bring it to fruition. However, the stage is now set with the policy document to forge ahead.
Now it's time for you to tell us what you think about it. The right to recall of counselors. And this is something is critical, it's serious. After all is said and done, we want to have better quality of life in our city, our towns, our communities. Whatever is, we, we finally put here, Minister, we would like to see changes for the better.